Welcome to this video on land resources, agriculture and food resources. I'm Aida Awad from Broward College. In this video, we have several learning targets. First, to identify uses of federally owned land and which agency is responsible. To compare and contrast the ecosystem benefits forests provide with the damage done by deforestation. To analyze the exploitation of forests and occurrences of deforestation and to compare and contrast the ecosystem benefits range lands provide with the damage done by range land degradation. So we'll start out by looking at land ownership in the United States. And this little pie chart here, I think gives us a really good picture of the distribution of land ownership just in the United States. About 60% is held by private citizens, corporations, or not profits. Only 2% by Native American tribes, 9% by state and local government entities, and the remaining 28%, yes, more than a quarter of the land of the United States is owned by the federal government. And that includes all types of ecosystems, all types of resources, depending on the historical and cultural significance. There are some critical biological habitats, and most of this land is in 11 Western states or Alaska. So here's a map that shows us the distribution of some of those federal lands and talks about who is responsible for the administration of those lands. So the Bureau of Land Management is actually responsible for 258 million acres of federal lands, and those lands under their management are uh, lands that are involved in national resource development. The U.S. Forest Service is responsible for all of the national forests, and that makes up 193 million acres of land. And you can see a lot of that national forest land in the dark green color on the map. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Administration is responsible for national wildlife refuges, 150 million acres of those. You can see those in the rusty color on this map. And finally, the National Park Service is responsible for 84 million acres, and you can see that in the brown color on this map. All of the others are under administration of other federal agencies, and that totals 33 million additional acres. So what are all these acres of federal lands used for? Well, some of them are used for recreation, for us, the public, hiking, swimming, boating, rafting, hunting, fishing, you name it. Some land is actually developed for other uses like logging, grazing, and mineral extraction. And if those sound like commercial uses to you, they do to me too. Benchmarks are set to determine the impact of human activity on these federally held lands. That would include performing science and educational opportunities. So it's things like geology, zoology, botany, ecology, and soil science that are being conducted both for scientific information and for education on federal lands. There are several ecosystem services benefits that we receive from these federally held lands. They include protected wildlife habitats to protect endangered species, flood and erosion controls, areas where groundwater can be recharged for aquifers, and areas that serve as filtering stations for the breakdown of pollutants. Turning our attention now to the federal lands that are forested. About one quarter of the total land area is forested lands. And those forested lands are harvested. They're harvested for paper, for fuel, and for construction materials. They also supply food items like nuts, mushrooms, fruits, and some medicines. They provide employment, they provide recreational areas, and spiritual sustenance. Some of the ecosystem services that those forested lands provide. Transpiration influences climate and climate change. They can also help us to maintain stable climate patterns, such as precipitation patterns. They help to regulate global biogeochemical cycles, and trees and vegetation act as big carbon sinks, so places where carbon is stored in the environment. These areas help to reduce erosion by protecting soils, and they protect watersheds. They also serve as habitats for many different species of organisms. 
As I said earlier, much of that forested land is actually harvested. In fact, 130 million cubic feet of wood were harvested from federal forest lands in 2014. There are five countries that have the greatest amount of tree harvest, the U.S. being one of them, the other four being Russia, China, Canada, and Brazil. And these produce more than half of the world's timber. Half of the wood that's harvested is burned as fuel wood or to make charcoal used in developing countries. And three-fourths of the remaining half is used in highly developed countries to produce paper and wood products. I think we can go digital. As we've heard in the news for many years, our forests are, are under attack. They're under attack from deforestation, which is the temporary or permanent clearing of forest lands for agriculture and other uses. In fact, world forests shrank from 1990 to 2015 by almost 230 million hectares. It's a 25 year loss equivalent to the size of South Africa. In fact, most of the deforestation is in tropical ecosystems. As you can see on this map here, the dark green color, so primarily in the northern regions, Canada and across Russia, and in the northern portions of South America, those are intact forest landscapes. But the dark brown or the tan color or even the red color, those are forests that have been converted to croplands or pastures or have been completely deforested can see the impact of that deforestation just on this map. Additional impacts of deforestation include leaching. If you take away the plants, there is more opportunity for rainwater to leach away soils, which decreases soil fertility, increases soil erosion, which increases sedimentation in waterways. It can cause the extinction of species, local and migratory. There's a loss of regulation of water flow, which increases flooding in local areas. It can impact climates by not providing opportunities for carbon storage. And global temperatures can increase because of the release of carbon dioxide from harvesting and burning those trees. Let's turn our attention now to rangelands. These lands look very different than the forests we were just looking at. Uh, these lands have a vegetation that consists primarily of grasses and small shrubs. And grassland is not intensively managed globally. It's used primarily for grazing of livestock. And it's important in terms of food production for humans. So we're grazing livestock, but we're also using these lands to mine them for minerals and energy resources. We're using them for rec recreation, and we're preserving some natural habitats. And if you think about it, it's possible to have lands being used at the surface for livestock grazing and yet be mining them underground or extracting things like natural gas. Our rangelands are also under attack. They're under attack from degradation. What we find is that rangelands that are being managed properly actually have a situation where the grazing stimulates plant growth. In fact, animals' hooves disturb the soil and make for better water, water absorption, which encourages plant growth. Those grasses have very deep root systems. They hold the soil in place. They're resistant to drought. And when they're grazed on, those grazing animals eat the leafy shoots, but they leave the roots in place. The danger here is that overgrazing will kill natural species, which can allow invasive species to come in and take over. And what end up, ends up happening is oftentimes with overgrazing and reduced amounts of precipitation is that we see desertification of the land. So you can see a picture in the bottom left corner here of what used to be a grassland in Arizona in 1902 all the way up until uh, just a little over 100 years later in 2003 that it has gone from a verdant green pasture to desert land. So when we think about conservation of land resources, we need to recognize that about 84.6% of Earth's land surfaces is an unprotected area, and only 15.4% is protected. And in the marine environment, only about 3.4% of the marine environment is protected. So we have a lot of work to do in terms of conservation of our land resources. Think you're ready for your review of the learning targets? 
and your Master Check quiz. So in this video, we talked about federally owned land and which agencies are responsible for administering them. We compared and contrasted the ecosystem benefits forests provide with the damage done by deforestation. We analyzed the exploitation of forests and occurrences of deforestation. And we compared and contrast the ecosystem benefits rangelands provide with the damage done by rangeland degradation. Go ahead and take your mastery check quiz and I'll see you in class.